Good morning, guys, and welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. So first of all, guys, let's just get this bit out of the way. Um, I just want to thank you all so much for going over um, and subscribing and watching our new channel. I just want to ask you if you can put down in the comments whether you think that the the way we're doing this works. Um, the idea was to put all the extra stuff like the you know the kit car, the E30, the track days, anything personal. Um, I want to be able to put on the second channel and I want to keep the first channel specifically for the engine work that we're doing in the machine processes. So um, yeah, put down in the comments guys whether you think that it is working. Um, if you haven't already, please head over to our second YouTube channel. There's a link in the description below. Go over there, subscribe, watch that, see what you think. Um, but yeah, just want to thank you um, ever so much for going over guys. We're monetized now on that channel, which means it, um, can help us sort of contribute towards the business financially. Um, obviously it takes a lot of time to produce these videos for me um, and I've got a lot on my plate anyway. So um, yeah, to give you guys content, it, you know, we sort of need to be paid for it a bit. Um, but yeah, today is another informative video. We're gonna get over and um, start cracking on with Kyle's Cosworth engine. I said that it would be turned around fairly smartish that. So. Um, Let's see, uh, let's see what we've got to do on that, shall we? Right, so we're cracking on with the Cosworth now. As you can see, I bought it to 0.5 um, this morning, and I'm just facing the existing uh, Cooper's rings out the top of it. So the idea of the rings back in the day when you just had the fibre gaskets, or the, what they called the Group A gaskets, they put wire rings in the top of the block um, and the theory was they stuck out about half a mil and they sort of et into the firing of the gasket. But obviously these days we use a Victor Ryan stainless, uh, sorry, multi-layer steel gasket. We don't need that idea. So there's two options of getting rid of them rings. You can see where the ring grooves are. Um, they are normally about between 20 and 25 thou deep. So obviously you've got a one mil thick uh, wire which has to sort of sit a little bit lower than half a mil just to sort of eat it, just to hold itself into the block. So we've got two options. You can either, we can either face those out, which means obviously we're going to be decking the block 25 thou. And then what we've got to do is obviously mod the top of the pistons to suit, or we can put the top at ductile iron liners in. So this customer has decided to go for um, facing them out so it just means that when we do the dummy build we're going to have to take a minimum of half a mil off the top of the pistons just to get them to the correct jot out so once this is done we've got to set it up then to do six long studs which we've got and then we are going to hone this block and that's the block pretty much finished then so guys i do apologize about the noise we've got plenty going on here at the moment we've got a head on the refacer i've got john facing a flywheel so it's a little bit noisy uh, right, so the Cosworth block, we've done the six long studs now. Um, you can see the centre ones, like I've said to you before, these are not, these are a solid cast, a bit of casting from top to bottom here, so it doesn't go into the water jacket. Therefore, we don't need to put the seal on the top, there's no need. So we just do the four outers, plus the seal groove, the 17 mil on this one can encroach on the oarway, so we just don't bother doing it. Um, right, so the reason we six long stood this, or the, the, re the two reasons we did, um, one, obviously to make it stronger so we can run big power, and two, because I've said to you before, look, you get the cracking on the top, so he's, the customer seems to think he did this one um, by not cleaning out, I think there was water or something in the bottom of the, the hole there, although he thought, um, and he thinks that it's caused it sort of hydraulic it and cracked it across there. Obviously when it's cracked and there's a thread in the top of the block um, that can open out and the stud can come loose. So obviously by drilling through and putting the long studs in we can eliminate anything, any stresses on the top there so you don't really need it. Um, but on closer inspection there's an actual crack down on this one here and also there's a crack appearing on this one just in that area you can see that so this block certainly needed the six long studs the four outers are absolutely fine there's no cracks there 
Um, so we're just going to hone this out. There's about a thou and a half to come out of this. Obviously, it's a 0.5 oversize. Um, so we just hone this one out, and then this block really can go outside. We can clean all the outside, give it a good thorough clean. Um, I pushed out the the ball at the back, which obviously blocks off the oil way, the oil gallery that runs through, and the two core plugs at the front. There's one here and one there. Um, we'll obviously, once it's thoroughly cleaned, we can paint it black and um, get this thing on the engine stand and get those gallery bongs back in there. So guys, the cylinder head for the Cosworth, you can see Isaac has blasted it nicely. It's come up like new. Um, haven't done any work to the face or the seats yet. We're just replacing the exhaust guides. Now these guys weren't that bad. Um, the inlets are absolutely perfect, so we're not going to replace them. My feeling is this head's been done not too long ago when the engine was done, but we're just going to replace these exhausts, get them nice snug fit. You see, we've got four in there. Now what we do, these are the guys that we use. This is the make. Um, you can see they're a bronze item, um, but the only thing is they do come without circlips. So we have to remove the circlips off the old guides and put these on. Now the reason we have the circlips on is so when we push them down into the head, they sit, that circlip sits against the base of the head and it stops basically, one, you get the correct height and two, it stops the guide from pulling through at any point. So we'll get these circlips on. Um, these are a nice sort of three thou interference fit in the head. Um, so what we normally do is I've made a little tool that goes over the top and sits on the shoulder. The trouble is if you push them or hit them in on the top there, this is where the stem seal sits, it can mushroom that out and then the seal don't go on it. Um, so what we do, I've made a little tool here, it's a nice fit on the shoulder underneath and sits a little bit more proud than the guide. And then we can hit that in with a nice flat bar of metal. So we just drive these in with the sledgehammer until they go down to to the shoulder on that circlip. Right, so as you can see, we got all the valves in now, all the springs are on, and all the new hydraulics are on. Now, first of all, these hydraulics, these are the twin chambered original hydraulics. So when I say twin chambered, I mean inside the hydraulic lifter or the body is a plunger. Then inside of that is another plunger. Um, that is the double chambered ones. The, these haven't been available for very long and there's still quite a lot of people who haven't got these available. So what people are tending to buy or sell is the Volkswagen PD engines. That's the 1900 pumper diesel um, Volkswagen diesel, you know, as in the Golf GTI, TDIs or whatever they are. Um, they're the ones that people are buying. They're the same size outside diameter, um, pretty much. Um, but they're a twin chambered. Basically the twin chambered is, is like a double security so it holds oil in so there's no oil that can escape. Um, and obviously with the, the big cams and the, the sort of the amount people, how hard people drive these, um, the, the single chambered ones have got a small life and we've had the odd set that just don't hold. It's a bit tappy when the oil's cold in the morning. Um, the oil sort of drains out of them overnight, uh, whereas these twin chamber ones, they all don't drain out at all. So they're the ones we've got in there. Um, the only trouble is with that, they're almost twice the price, but if they do the job, then they're the ones you've got to use. Secondly, camshaft. At the front of these cams, you've got a bearing, um, and the bearing has got a, um, a circlip all the way around that locates in the cylinder head. You can see that. And on the front is a collar. Now this is the collar that runs inside of the cam seal, okay? Now if you notice, this collar has got a 45 degree chamfer on the inside. And the reason for that is you've got a little O-ring which wasn't on this engine when we stripped it. Um, and the reason for that little O-ring is to, the taper sort of goes over it and pushes it into the bearing and down into the shaft and it stops oil leaking from around the back through here um, and through this through the front pulley and leaking down the front so they're very very important but this didn't have it on that's probably why it was plastered in oil all over the front um, so once that one's on we then a bit of grease on the inside make sure the outside is dry and then we just fit that over that collar and that goes just inside there. You see there's one 
one complete unit. So now that collar turns inside, obviously when you put the front pulley on and do the bolt up, it all tightens up tightly to the back of the cam. Um, everything's in line and that'll work beautifully. Um, now on the two wheel drive heads, it's a slightly different design than this. All this is a bit further forward. So this being a four wheel drive head, uh, these are obviously four wheel drive cams, but all the modern cams now that you get from like Newman cams, the uprated cams, they're all four wheel drive. So when you buy them for a two wheel drive head, you find that all this is a bit further forward and you need to run a spacer in between that and there. It's about five mil. If you don't, all this cam wanders up here and you find that this load may hit the head. Um, so yeah, just something to be careful of if you're ever putting a Cosworth head together. So what we do is we take all this apart, we um, blast it all and get it all nice and clean because you find that a lot of rust goes on around here. And what we're gonna do is blast the pulley and the bolt, paint that up and then put that all on. Right, so you see we've got the cams in now. Um, we've just got to torque these down um, and then we're gonna clean up the pulleys, etc. I just wanted to show you this quickly. So either side of here and the same at the front there and there we've got the oil galleries that run through the head either side and those those oil galleries are the ones that feed the hydraulics uh, so there's a hole going from the oil gallery to the hydraulics and that is what feeds them and jacks them up um, obviously when we blast the head we want to clean those thoroughly so if you have a look down there it goes all the way through to the back absolutely clean as a whistle so we now need to put those oil gallery bungs back in if you don't put those in you're going to find that oil absolutely pees out of there under oil pressure so these are the little plugs okay so what we do is we put those in with a little bit of this heldite joining compound now this stuff is brilliant it goes rock hard and it's brilliant for um, putting plugs in like that really that you want oil tight um, better than silicon way better so we put a little bit of that on the threads and wind them in and just nip them up um, and we'll do those two now. So guys, we've been cracking right on with this Cosworth engine for Kyle. I think he said he wants to do a show very soon. Um, so I did say that I'm going to turn this one around fairly smartish for him. Um, so we've got the cylinder head together. We've got the block all painted and cleaned. So this is where we are with the block guys. It's looking fresh and it's new black paint. Um, you can see Top's faced, it's bored to half a mil. We've got the long studs in now and machined. You can see we don't need the, the rubber seals on the center two, we've got them in the outer two. Um, so that is all prepped, cleaned, ready to go. The crank is on standard, measures absolutely perfect, right on bottom limit where we like them. So John has polished that crank. Isaac has balanced the crank assembly. You can see there where you've got the balancing marks. Now, we were waiting for the clutch and the flywheel to come in. Um, unfortunately, the, the crank was not too far out of balance. You can see there we've got a little bit. I don't know whether there's any round here. Yeah, so the crank, it looks like the crank was absolutely fine on this end. Um, on the back end, which is the flywheel end, there was a little bit out on one of the webs. Um, he said that the front pulley needed a couple of little holes, nothing too disastrous, and the flywheel wasn't too bad now you bear in mind this is the old clutch it doesn't look like it's done much work this as i've said to you because the engine didn't do that much work um, it's pretty new but it was running like this but there is a problem guys and this is where the thumbnail and title comes in look at those holes there now isaac said when he spun this up initially it just went straight off the gauge and you could feel it vibrating through the machine now bear in mind our machine spins at 400 rpm so even 10 times that is only sort of four grand on the engine. So you can imagine how much stress is being put on through the main bearings on this. Um, so Isaac said that obviously there was no more room to, to drill here. So he's had to sort of drill either side and make it all sort of make it all matter. Now this is on zero now. It's absolutely fully in balance. Um, but yeah, you can just see how far that out that is out, guys. To drill that many sort of eight mil holes um, on that diameter, that is massively out. So 
Yeah, just once again, like I've said to you before, just goes to show the importance of balancing the whole crank assembly because you've only got to have one thing that's miles out like that. And this thing at about seven grand is going to shake itself to bits, to be honest with you. Um, it's certainly going to limit the life of the main bearings at the very least. So where are we now? We've got the, the main bearings in the base of this block. We're going to turn it over in a minute. The crank's all cleaned. Pistons, you can see, I've put my pockets in. Now, I always do my pockets five mil deep, and we've got to end up taking probably a bit more than half a mil off the outside of these pistons and the center bowl to get it back to eight to one ratio. So we're still going to be left with four and a half mil um, of pocket there, which is more than adequate. A lot of these pockets that come in pistons now are probably only about two and a half, three mil deep. So no issues there. So the next step, we're going to get the crank in. Uh, we're going to torque the mains up on that and then we're going to dummy build, obviously put the pistons and rods down without any circlips in um, and see what our jut out is on the pistons. Now, I have been waiting to size the rods because I've just had a delivery from Burton and you can see there we've got the ARP big end bolts. Um, so I ordered that. I ordered a set of thrusts, which I didn't have in standard and also a drive for the distributor and the oil pump. Now, bear in mind, I don't know whether I said this, but bear in mind this engine has supposedly been sort of built and um, hadn't done many miles at all. This was the drive in the, for the oil pump. Now you can see, I would say this is an original drive. Now, it looks fairly inadequate, this thing. You think, well, it's only like a six mil bit of hex, you know, um, but that is driving the oil pump. So you know, when you've got flats on the corners like that, it's probably not going to be too long before it rounds off. Um, so why people just don't replace those things. And um, what I normally do is take this thing off here because you're meant to load these up from behind. Um, but I take them off so you can basically, all you've got to do is take the distributor out probably every 10,000 mile, take that out with a magnet and replace it with a new one. Um, but yeah, very, very important bit of kit that. So guys, now I've got the big end bolts, I can get those in the rods torqued up, then we can measure the rods and we're gonna to have to probably size those housings. Well, that's all we've got time for today, guys. Unfortunately, um, look out for Friday's video on the main channel um, where we crack on with the rest of that Cosworth, hopefully get that finished. Um, but until then, have a great evening. Enjoy this nice weather we've got for a couple of days and uh, we'll see you then. Cheers, guys.